I'm here with Khadija and she's going to be our model today when we demonstrate our treatment protocol on treating women in urogenital dysfunctions and we'll be addressing specifically the bladder and uterus. Now Khadija told me when she arrived a little bit about some of her medical history and I wanted for her to explain this to you so you can have a little bit of context in knowing what might be your typical patient who might come to you with something as innocuous as low back pain but actually as you would go more into her medical history you'll find that there's a lot more symptoms and signs with regards to her history that are going to indicate that some visceral pelvic work is going to be needed. So Khadija, tell us a little bit about what you were talking about when you arrived. Okay, so I'm a mother of five and I was experiencing some back pain because I had an epidural with the first child and it's like a continuous thing. I'm always getting the back pain and um, yeah, I went to see an osteopath when I was having my fifth child when I, while I was pregnant and um, I should return because I, I continue to get back pain. I'm always suffering from back pain in the injection site. So yes. So we, when we're going to do the treatment, we're going to work on trying to relieve some low back pain, but we're also going to work a little bit on the pelvic area and the sacrum specifically. So are you ready to get started? Yes. Great. I'm now going to demonstrate for you three different techniques that we're going to use in treating the bladder and uterus. And this is our first part of the treatment protocol whereby we're treating the pelvic organs. So first we're going to work to release any restrictions within the bladder. Next, we're going to work to restore mobility of the uterus. And thirdly, we're going to work on pumping the pelvis. So let's start by working on releasing any restrictions within the bladder itself. In our assessment protocol, I showed you how you're going to position your hand just superior to the pubic symphysis, right at the pubic bone. This is where we're going to contact our bladder and you're going to reach in and scoop up and try to raise it and then we're going to release our scoop and allow it to glide back down and I find that on my patient as I try to reach in and grab the bladder and scoop it upwards towards her head I don't feel like I have a lot of upward mobility I'm trying to scoop it, I'm working up this way. So as we're treating, we're going to reach in, we're going to scoop up. I get to about here and I already feel some resistance. So I'm going to hold that point of tension and resistance for a few minutes until I feel the tissue start to soften and release. And then I can go a little further and then I'm going to release and then I'm going to allow it to float back down. So once again, we're going to reach in, we're going to scoop up that bladder, we're going to lift it towards the head, and right away, right at the area of my phenar eminence right here, I'm already feeling some restrictions and tension, so I'm going to hold that area of tension, hold it for a few minutes until I feel the tissues under my hand start to soften, And then I'm going to release and I'm going to allow the bladder to float back down. And then I'm going to engage and do it again. And you see this time I'm able to go a little bit further. That means that I'm getting some release of the tissues. I'm going to hold until I get to that maximum point of tension. Hold it for a few minutes and then gradually release. And you can see how quickly in her case, the bladder floats back down towards the perineal floor. So when we're having difficulty raising the bladder up towards the patient's head and encouraging its upward expansion, which is the direction that it needs to go naturally as the bladder fills with urine, it means that we have some potential adhesions, restrictions, or anything that is pushing the bladder down towards the perineal floor. So Khadija, we just finished demonstrating our treatment protocol on you and you actually mentioned to us that you felt some effects as I was okay. demonstrating. So tell me a little bit about what you felt was going on. Okay, so I had a lot of tension in my back when I arrived and the different treatments that you did, I noticed a difference. I feel a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my back feels a lot lighter 
And I'm sitting here with you and I actually could sit a little bit better. Like I naturally have the curve in my back. But so your low back doesn't hurt as much? No. And tell me what you gave me as feedback when I was working and I was doing some of the techniques and treating the actual um, pelvic viscera. Mm -hmm. You said that you felt that it soothing. was? It was rather soothing. So she said that she felt that it was soothing and you said that it felt even somewhat like I was doing some Reiki or energy work, yes. right? Yes. So you see that when you do visceral osteopathy, if it's done right and if it's done in a rhythmic fashion and if you adjust your palpation skills accordingly, your patient is going to be able to tell you right away that she feels a beneficial effect and if your hands are too heavy and you're too aggressive in your technique your patient is actually going to recoil and is going to grimace and you're going to see that maybe you're being a little bit too harsh so your patient's feedback is going to be a very good indication in knowing whether or not you're doing the technique right and also you found that I did the technique just a few times on you right two yes. or three times yes. but I did seven different techniques on you in this protocol do you feel like what I did was too much no. or you had some relief with what we did. Yes. So you see, I demonstrated each technique just maybe two or three times, ran through the whole protocol, and even though my goal was just to demonstrate, Khadija actually said that she felt some beneficial effects where you said that your lower back doesn't hurt as much. Yes. It felt soothing in your pelvic area. Yes, it actually felt like I needed to come back because I know I needed to see an osteopath, but I can actually feel that I should have came sooner. There we go. So you see, sometimes you might find yourself working on a patient who comes to you with low back pain, but she doesn't realize that she actually needs some pelvic, abdominal and visceral work done on her until you actually start doing it. Then a patient starts realizing, oh, in fact, I'm postpartum. I've had several pregnancies. And she has the classic history of a patient who would need this type of work because she didn't realize that some of her low back pain or some of her tension within this area was actually coming from her history and all of the pressure that was pushing down on the bladder and pelvis and contributing to her low back pain. Exactly. So Khadija, I want to thank you for coming today and being our model for us. You've been great and I hope you go home and you're feeling a lot better. You're welcome and thank you. Thank you.